Armando Hasurigan, Biology and Medicine videos. Please make sure to subscribe, join the forum and group for the latest videos. Please visit Facebook Armando Hasurigan. Uh, like, please. And here you can also ask questions, answer some questions, and please post some of your artworks or any artworks which you think are good. And please change the quality settings to the highest one for better graphics. In this video, we're going to talk about the complement system. And this is just going to be an overview to see how the complement proteins and the pathways are all related in some way. Now, what happens when a pathogen invades the body? When a pathogen inv invades the body, the first line of defense is the innate immune system, which comprises the physical barriers and the chemical and biological barriers afterwards. Now, when the pathogen uh, successfully infiltrates our body, we have complement proteins in the bloodstream, the blood vessels. And these complement proteins are part of the innate immune system. And they, and they are in the bloodstream because they're soluble proteins. And what these complement proteins do, they do a few things, including performing opsonization, uh, making a membrane attack complex, and they also enhance inflammation. Overall, the complement proteins aim in destroying the invading pathogen. So what does opsonization mean? Well, opsonization is a process where, where the complement proteins essentially coats the outer surface of the pathogen, which allows phagocytes, in this case a macrophage, to engulf the pathogen much more easier because the macrophage contains special receptors for specific complement proteins. Complement proteins can also uh, make a membrane attack complex. A membrane attack complex is essentially when a group of complement proteins makes a hole in a pathogen, which causes inrushing fluids, um, creating a disbalance in osmolarity, which causes the pathogen to lyse, to be destroyed. And we will see later on in this video how the complement proteins initiate opsonization, the membrane attack complex, and enhance inflammation. But for now, let's see where complement proteins come from. The complement system is composed of more than 30 types of proteins. Now, the complement proteins is produced by the liver, and the complement proteins will then travel through the bloodstream. Now, these complement proteins circulate in an inactive form, and so they don't attack the body. But when they come across a pathogen, they will become activated. And when the complement proteins are activated, they will then opsonize, create a membrane attack complex on the pathogen, and also enhance inflammation. The complement proteins don't actually get activated that, that easily because actually the complement proteins interact with each other and induce a cascade of activation, a complement protein activating another complement protein. And so because of this, there are many complement pathways because there's many types of ways that complement proteins can activate each other. And these complement pathways are the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway. The classical pathway being the first to be discovered. The complement proteins involved in the classical pathway is the C1Q, C1R, C1S, C4, and C2. In the alternative pathway, we have factor D, factor B, properidin, and C3. And for the lectin pathway, we have MBL, mannose binding um, le lectin, uh, Ficolin, MASP2, C4, and C2. Now, honestly, don't be intimidated by all these types of proteins. We will learn about them slowly. But what is to know about this small diagram is that the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway, all these proteins will essentially help in splitting or activating complement protein 3 to make uh, C3A and C3B. And it is C3A which enhances inflammation together with other common proteins, and C3B which initiates opsonization and as well as lysis of the cell to create a membrane attack complex. So C3 is an important protein to remember, and C3 um, gets activated into complement 3A and complement 3B. Now, so complement proteins typically have a C in front of them. So for example, we have C1, C2, and C3 here. Complement proteins also tend to be activated when they are cleaved by something. So for example, when C3 is cleaved to C3A and C3B, these are the activated complement proteins. C2A can become activated to C2, C2A and C2B. C5 is cleaved to, be act to the active form of C5A and C5B. Uh, I hope you understood that. But for now, let's look at the complement pathways and see how they all these pathways 
will essentially activate C3 to cleave it into C3A and C3B. So remember, we have three complement pathways, the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway. Here we have a pathogen, the screen. And on the pathogen surface, we can either have, um, we can have antigens, we can have mannose, carbohydrates, and also short oligosaccharides, depending if it's a gram-negative or gram-positive bacteria, or whatever type of pathogen it is. Let's look at the classical pathway first. The classical pathway gets initiated or activated when antibodies bind to the antigen of a pathogen. And then when this happens, uh, some complement proteins composed of C1Q, C1S, and C1R bind to these antibodies. Well, actually, C1Q binds to the FC portion of the antibody. And essentially, what this C1S, C1Q, C1R complex does is that it forms another complement, uh, complement protein complex known as the C4B2A complex. Another name for this is the C3 convertase. Because it is a C3 convertase, it is also an enzyme. And we'll look at the function of C3 convertase later on. But for now, let's stop there and look at the lectin pathway, which is very much similar to the classical pathway, but involves different types of protein, proteins in the activation of the C4B2A complex, the C3 convertase. Now, the lectin pathway differs to the other pathways because what initiates it are proteins binding to carbohydrates on the pathogen. So, for example, we have a protein called philcholin, which binds to the oligosaccharides of a pathogen, a bacteria. Philcholin also has other proteins bound to it, the MASP1 and MASP2. Another type of protein is the mannose binding lectin, or abbreviated MBL, which binds to mannose um, parts of the pathogen. Uh, mannose binding lectin also comprises of other proteins, the MASP1 and MASP2, similar to the philcholin. And MASP stands for essentially mannose associated serine protease. So there's two types, the mannose associated serine protease 1 and mannose associated serine protease 2. Now essentially what philcholin and mannose binding lectin do with the other uh, mannose associated serine pro uh, protease is that they also form a com complement protein complex exactly the same as the classical one, the C4B2A complex, also known as C3 convertase. So as you can see, the classical pathway and lectin pathway involves different proteins in the initiation or the formation of C3 convertase, known as the C4B2A complex. And we skip the alternative pathway for now because the alternative pathway actually becomes activated when the classical pathway and lectin pathway forms this C4B2A complex, the C3 convertase. And we'll soon see why. So now the question is, what does the C4B2A complex do, this C3 convertase? Well, the C3 convertase is on the surface of the pathogen. And what it, it essentially does is that it activates the C3 protein. So the C4B2A complex splits the C3 to form C3B and C3A. Now that we've got this formation of C3B and C3A, we go back to the alternative pathway and see how the alternative pathway um, is initiated. The alternative pathway is initiated when the C4B2A convertase activates C3B. The C3B then binds on the surface of the pathogen. The alternative pathway will then form another type of C3 convertase different to the ones formed by the lectin and classical pathway. This C3 convertase is called C3BBB -B complex. The alternative pathway can also form another type of C3 convertase, this time with a protein called properdin. And this complex is um, known by the same name, C3BBB complex, um, which is, as I said, a C3 convertase. So as you can see, the alternative pathway is essentially enhances the classical and lectin pathway, or the classical and lectin pathway enhances the um, alternative pathway. But all these pathways, the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway, all form a C3 convertase. And what a C3 convertase does is that it activates the C3, 
which basically splits a C3 into a C3A and a C3B. So this is the main thing to take in. Okay, so now we have the activated form of C3, C3A and C3B. Now what do they do? C3A with other complement proteins, such as C5A, which is actually one of the most important complement proteins, will enhance inflammation. Actually, all the complement proteins with A will do some form of, in of inflammatory process. So in this case, C3A and C5A will stimulate mast cells to secrete histamine. What does histamine do? Histamine enhances inflammation. Histamine increases vascular permeability, which allows leukocytes to pass through more easily. And histamine also attracts leukocytes. And in this case, we can see a macrophage and neutrophil passing through. Now, what does C3B do? An important thing to know is that C3B can form theoester bonds. C3B, if you remember at the beginning of the video, video actually initiates opsonization and um, forms the, initiates the formation of the membrane attack complex. Um, actually, important thing to know is that there are actually many C3Bs and many C3As because the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway forms many C3 convertase, which means that they, that, they, that they split many C3s to form many C3Bs and many C3As. So it's important to know. Now that we have many C3Bs, these C3Bs can actually um, bind to the pathogen surface through this theoester bond. Now, as you can see, we can see many C3Bs forming theoester bonds with the pathogen surface. So it essentially coats the pathogen, a process called opsonization. And this allows uh, macrophage to easily engulf this pathogen once it's been coated. Now, a macrophage actually has two special receptors for complement proteins, a CR1 and a C5A receptor. A macrophage cannot engulf a pathogen coated with C3B just like that. It actually needs the help of another protein complement protein called uh, C5A. So when C5A complement protein binds to the C5A receptor of the macrophage, this then allows the macrophage or helps the macrophage bind to the C3B protein through the CR1 receptors. And then through this, the macrophage can perform phagocytosis, eating up the pathogen. C3B can alternatively bind to the C3 convertase, the specifically the C4B2A complex from the classical pathway or the lectin pathway, if you remember. Now, when it binds, the C3B will bind to this C4B2A complex, which will then form the C4B2A3B complex, also known as the C3C5 convertase. And so this C3C5 convertase can do two things. It can actually still split or activate C3 to form C3A and C3B. And now it can actually cleave and activate C5 to C5A and C5B. And remember, C5A can enhance inflammation or it can bind to the macrophages receptor. C5B is an important protein because it initiates the terminal stage, the formation of the membrane attack complex, abbreviated MAC, MAC. And so C5B, together with other complement proteins of higher number, such as C9, C8, and C7, will form this MAC, the membrane attack complex. And the formation of the membrane attack complex on a pathogen's surface membrane will cause the pathogen to lyse, to self-destruct, so cell bursting, destroying the pathogen. So as you can see from this overview of the complement system, the complement proteins and the system itself is very important for the body, especially in the, um, in the first line of defense, in the innate immune system. Because that was simply an overview of the complement system, I'll provide links on the screen, which you can click to, for the classical pathway, the alternative pathway, and the lectin pathway to see it in more detail, as well as a link to the formation of the membrane attack complex, how it is formed. So I hope you actually enjoyed this video. Please like, comment, share, and please subscribe. Thank you very much.